Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization, video series part two of our Preventing Muscle Loss on a Cut Strategies Nutrition this time. The last video, if you want to check it out, was how do we alter our training or really checklist our training to make sure we're doing all the things that basically prevent or try to prevent muscle loss on a cut. Now, what can we do with our diet to make sure that during our fat loss phase, we're not like doing anything stupid or not doing anything obvious that needlessly sloughs off muscle, our hard earned, dearest muscle, most important thing in the world. Here we go. Number one, some of these are basic as shit, some more nuanced. Number one, keep your protein above minimum levels. For the love of God, gram of protein per pound per day uh, if you want to be extra sure. Are there studies in which people don't lose muscle on less? Yes, there are. Are there studies when they do with contest bodybuilders that they still lose muscle on more? Yes. So if you want to shoot that middle ground, but a little bit air on the side of plenty, gram per pound is a real good place to start. So uh, you know, if you weigh 200 pounds, 200 grams of protein per day, anything less, I would just describe as not a very serious attempt to try to mitigate muscle loss, okay? So if you eat 170 grams of protein every day and you lose a bunch of muscle on a fat loss plan and you sort of come to someone and you're like, hey, like I lost muscle, like what did I do wrong? Like they're gonna be like, I thought you're eating less than a gram per pound of protein per day. Now, eating much more than that is probably not super advantageous, but you gotta at least eat at least that to, to get like a good old junior varsity attempt at preventing muscle loss. Number two, again, a pretty obvious one, keep your deficit smaller. The greater your deficit, the more likely it is past a point that you'll start to lose some muscle mass. So if you have a deficit of 500 calories a day or less, unless you're really messing up somewhere else, you're not a really big risk of muscle loss. Anything over 500 calorie deficit per day, so let's say your maintenance is 3,000, anything under 2,500 in that case is a calculated risk. Now look, up until you get to 1,000 calorie deficit per day for many people, it's a calculated but low risk. Of course, north of 1,000, it's a calculated and probably pretty high risk of muscle loss. So just know that. In other words, if you're losing weight and you're keeping track of your body weight really well and all the salt and water is balancing out, anything much faster than a pound of weight lost per week is going to risk muscle loss somewhat. But the more that it is than a pound, the more it's going to risk it. So for example, if you say, hey, I want to be extra careful I don't lose muscle. I'm doing a 12-week diet. How much weight should I lose? I'll say 12 pounds, but no more. If you say, hey, I'm like, you know, I don't want to lose a ton of muscle, but it's okay if I lose a little bit. I'll say you can lose up to like, I don't know, like 16 pounds of, 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 uh, of body weight, maybe 18. I think you'd be totally fine. If you come to me and say, listen, I'm going to do a 12-week diet. I want to lose 24 pounds during that time of tissue. What are the chances that none of it's going to be muscle? I'll tell you, it's probably pretty low on average. Now, some people can pull it off and have, but just be aware of that. What I don't want you guys to do is get into a fat loss plan with a crazy egregious, like, I'm losing two and a half pounds a week, and then be like, shit, I lost muscle. Like, just be aware of this, right? Because it's a, it's not like a do this or, or you know, this is the right answer. Don't do this. This is the wrong answer. There's a spectrum. Just know the spectrum, right? Number three, keeping your diet shorter is a good way to ensure that muscle loss is minimized. So if you do any diet under eight weeks, especially if it's within a pound of tissue or close to that per week. So like if you lose eight pounds and then take a diet break, unless you're really fucked up or you're like super lean, uh, you're probably not going to lose any muscle or a tiny, tiny minimum amount. Anything much longer than 12 weeks begins to be a calculated risk, right? How You might have more fat to lose or want more fat to lose than you can reasonably with low muscle loss in 12 weeks or less. That's totally fine. What you can do then is diet for 8 to 12 weeks, then take roughly 8 to 12 weeks or maybe more like 5 to 9 weeks, something like two-thirds or three-fourths of the lengths of your last diet, and do a maintenance phase. Your diet fatigue will fall, your body will recalibrate to its new settling point, and then you can do another diet of 8 to 12 weeks again each time muscle loss risk is low. And you'll say to yourself like, yeah, that's cool and all, but that means it's like 36 weeks or some shit between when I started and when I hit my goal. Well, yeah, if muscle loss is important to you, or rather muscle retention is important, you're going to diet slower because slower diets absolutely result in most cases in less muscle loss. That's just how it works, right? So that's just another way of saying this. If you have to diet for a show and you've got 12, 16 weeks of prep or you've got 20 weeks of prep or something like that, and you have to be in a deficit almost that entire time, comes with the territory. But look, if you're dieting for a show, 
you're probably accepting some risk of muscle loss to be super lean on stage. Different, different uh, category of events there, but nonetheless, it's accepting calculated risk, and I'm just here to tell you what that risk is. Next up, point number four, keeping your meal frequency at or above four meals per day. Three meals per day is pretty low risk, okay? But four meals per day, evenly spread, plenty of protein in each meal, plenty of calories in each meal, not exactly evenly, but pretty close, spread throughout the day. Four plus meals just does a really, really good job at anti-catabolism. If you eat two meals or fewer on a fat loss phase and you're uh, worried about muscle loss, what I would say is I would consider that as not really a serious attempt at muscle loss mitigation. It's just not. Yes, your friend did intermittent fasting and they got ripped and didn't lose any muscle. But your friend is probably fucking tiny and a fucking noob. Uh, or is lying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sometimes intermittent fasting works out, but it's not dependable enough to be that much of a guarantee of a prevention of muscle loss. So it's one of these things where if you're going to step on a bodybuilding stage, you need to be as muscular as you can at a lean level. You're going to be eating four meals a day or more in almost every case. There's a reason bodybuilders do that. And it's not all just myth. Okay, it's, it fucking works. And the liter literature reviews on the subject support that at least four high pro protein exposures per day probably maximizes anabolism and maximizes anti-catabolism. So I'm not saying that eating one or two meals a day is just a recipe for crazy muscle loss. It's not. Sometimes you can pull it off and it works pretty well. It's just not our best guess as to what works best, right? So, you know, like if there's some kind of, uh, if you're building a plane to go really high and you have some kind of like special coating that has, you know, stability, pr pr promotes stability at high altitudes, um, it's not that like if you just put a regular plane up in at 80,000 feet, it's just going to fucking blow up. Like, no, you'll probably be fine. But like, you know, if you don't really want to use the injection seat or <laughs> the in injection seat, little uh, Freudian slip there. If you don't want to use the injection seat at 80,000 and toast $10 million of equipment, you might as well put the paint on, right? So... Four meals a day, look, if, if you really hate eating frequently, one of those can be like a, a protein meal replacement shake. Uh, another one can be two or three protein bars. It's not the end of the world, but it is that extra special touch to make sure you're doing everything you can to minimize muscle loss risk. Number five, leave as much carbohydrate in as you can. So you meet your protein needs, you meet your fat needs. We'll get to what those are and actually the next point. And then keep as much carbohydrate around as possible. You, in, in, in essence, from your mass gaining diet, you want to cut mostly fats to generate a deficit. And a lot of times on a mass gaining diet, we're eating a lot of fats, especially with cheat meals. Fats are a plenty. If you cut them out, unless you cut them too low, you don't pay a crazy hormonal price. You don't pay a crazy energy price. You don't pay a crazy price as far as cravings are concerned. And you have all those carbohydrates there to power your training and to be very anti-catabolic. One of the most demonstrated things in the scientific literature about carbs is that they are protein sparing. If you have plenty of carbs coming in with protein, of course, your body just isn't into burning muscle much. If you have a low carbohydrate environment, your body doesn't mind burning a fuckload of muscle to make ends meet. So at the very least, if you have to cut your carbs because the calories just have to be that low to meet your goal, make sure you're cutting them from everywhere first other than your workout window, which is to say, if you have any carbs left in your day at all, they had better be in the pre-workout meal and the post-workout meal. The pre-workout meal gives you crazy energy because look, if you're on a low-carb diet and you get some carbs, you're like a fucking psycho. Have a great workout, put in tons of anabolic and anti-catabolic stimulus through that workout. In addition to that, the post-workout meal, if you have carbohydrates in it, probably helps the anabolic machinery and thus the muscle sparing machinery get rolling a little bit better, promotes recovery, so on and so forth. Next point, number six, don't drop your fats too low. You need them for hormone production, for testosterone production, which means you spare a ton of muscle, not only through you have uh, more drive to train, more sex drive, which is just fun, and also more actual chemical drive by directly, by testosterone, to keep muscle on your body. Huge factor. If you're enhanced, if you're not drug-free, less of a factor, but it still plays a role in other hormonal areas, so cutting your fat like crazy usually isn't worth it. If you're at about 0.3 grams per pound per day, which if you weigh 200 pounds, that's like 60 grams of fat per day, for example, 
Anything lower than that, probably not worth the trade-off. But anything much higher than 0.4, which means like 80 grams of fat per day or above for someone that weighs 200 pounds, then you're starting to get into the, if I'm eating more fats than this, I might as well just take out those fats, go down to somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4 grams per pound per day, and just use uh, the calories to have extra carbs. Because extra carbs up until the fats get super low are more anti-catabolic. They do spare more muscle mass. Number seven. Keep your activity high, lift plenty, do plenty of cardio, or just be more active is even the best. This is because at some level, just eating a small amount of food is the trigger for muscle loss. Doing plenty of activity means your calorie burn is so high, you can eat lots of food and that feeds your muscles and does everything else, especially supports your hormones. You never really have this huge catabolic influence from just not eating enough because you're eating plenty. And even though you have plenty of activity, mostly that just burns fat and doesn't touch your muscle. What you don't wanna do is have a super low level of activity, just basically sit on the couch all day, because then in order to lose weight at the prescribed date you want, you're gonna have to dip your food so low, you start losing muscle just because of that. So a little bit counterintuitively, make sure you're plenty doing plenty of cardio, lifting weights aggressively and often, and having plenty of daily activity. Point number eight, don't slash tons of calories up front. Create the minimum deficit that you have to in order to get going. That's it. You wanna lose a pound a week, cut 500 or so calories and go. It's always tempting to be like, ooh, I have so many calories left, I could slash way more of them, I feel great, and I'm gonna lose tons of weight. Well, yeah, you are for a short term. Your diet fatigue is gonna spike up, and then you'll have to recede from that if you don't wanna lose muscle. So when starting a diet, think of it as the start. You don't rev into 10th gear right away, right? Just start nice and easy. Fat loss is easy at the beginning of the diet. Use the easy times with plenty of food, not crazy drop calories, as your body begins to resist fat loss more, you have that high of a calorie load to slowly take away from. And because you're never pressuring your body to lose too fast, muscle loss risk isn't ever as big as it could be. Now, lastly, the leaner you get, the harder it is to keep muscle on your body. You have to be realistic here. If you're wondering why you're losing muscle and why your strength is going down, when you're dieting from, I already have abs and veins to question mark, question mark, question mark, I want face striations, then it's not really much of a question. Shit happens when you push your body to the extremes. So if you're starting out at 20% body fat, you're dieting to 15 or 13%, you can reasonably lose no muscle at all. If you're starting at 10% body fat and you're dieting to 4% for a bodybuilding show, you can expect to lose a little bit of muscle. It shouldn't shock you, it shouldn't surprise you, and it's not like you did anything wrong. It's just part of the process. And you will regain it back quite quickly, I might add. But it's a thing. It's just a thing. So know what you're getting yourself into so you're not unrealistic about what's going on. That means even if you're dieting from 10% to 4% and you know you're probably running into some muscle loss, you should still use all these strategies. Because when we say some, it could be this. It could be that. You want it as little as possible. Do all these tips. Hopefully you have some good luck. See you guys next time for the cardio portion.